Hi everybody, it's Julie and in the May newsletter I'm going to be doing a product line overview of WOW embossing powders and with heat embossing becoming super popular once again it's fun to see a company come out with products that are all centered around embossing powders. WOW has their own fab foil for using their bonding powder. They also have molds that you can create your own 3D embellishments with their super thick uh, melted powder. They have a slow drying embossing pad, gorgeous colors of transparent embossing powder and glittery embossing powders and also some special effects powders. Another thing they carry that's kind of awesome are their anti-static jars. So if you like to make your own custom embossing powders you can store them in those jars and I love the anti-static properties of them. So one thing I wanted to compare was my Versamark against the ultra slow drying embossing pad and they performed pretty much the same. So I was very pleased to see that. Another thing I noticed was that their embossing powders, um, all that I experimented with seemed to melt very nice and smoothly. And I love a nice smooth finish and it captured all the details of the image quite nicely, but I love a smooth, super shiny finishing embossing powder. One thing I was not aware of when I went to emboss on black paper though was that the colors I had chosen were actually transparent so they don't show up on black cardstock and it's something to keep in mind when you're choosing your colors. I know they have an opaque white and it says that it's opaque on the jar so just something to keep in mind when you're um, shopping uh, WOW embossing powders and um, make sure that you're getting what you want. So now I'm gonna play around with the glittery embossing powders, again, using the WOW embossing pad with the ultra slow drying ink. And I love these two colors. This one's called Under the Sea, and then there's another called um, Royal Crush that had some deep turquoise glitter in it. And one thing I noticed as I started to heat them is there is a really nice ratio of the embossing powder to glitter because you need a certain amount of embossing powder to actually melt and fuse the glitter and bond it to the paper. And they use an ultra fine glitter that is not too chunky. So you get a really nice finish when you heat emboss these glittery powders. And I kind of zoomed the camera in a little bit so you could see just how fun and sparkly these are. Next up, I wanted to play with the white puff powder because I love liquid applique and I thought it was fun to see an embossing powder that could duplicate this effect. So I'm just going to use the WOW Ultra Slow Drying Pad to stamp the image and then apply this powder over the top. It is a coarser grind of powder and then when I heated it, it was a little bit difficult to see, but I had to touch it because I wasn't sure what it was going to feel like and I thought it would be kind of soft and spongy like liquid applique is, but it, this is very different. It's very hard and you don't think it's going to be hard when you touch it. The cool thing about that is it won't get squashed flat in the mail and I think this is a great powder for like furry bunnies and clouds and things like that. So it gives you the look but it doesn't squish down like liquid applique would. Now the glow in the dark powder is going to be super fun for Halloween. I first stamped my butterflies again with the WOW Ultra Slow Drying Embossing Pad and applied the glow in the dark powder over the top and here you can see it very well. And it's a finer grind of powder. Made sure I was getting good coverage there because I was kind of sloppy when I first put the powder over the top. And then as I heated it, I noticed I got an image that was matte finish, not super shiny, not totally matte finish, but it was kind of a semi-matte finish on the black cardstock. And it does show up in a pale kind of ghostly yellow. <laughs> <laughs> super pale yellow. I tried it on white cardstock and there you can see what the actual color looks like over white cardstock. And I did go into the bathroom, shut off all the lights to see what I would get and it glowed in the dark very nicely. I could see all the details of my butterflies. So that's awesome. I can't wait to use that for um, more projects, especially for my granddaughter. She's going to love that. Next up, I wanted to try the bonding powder with their um, thermal transfer foils. So I stamped again with the ultra slow drying ink pad and applied the bonding powder over the top. And the only word I can have to describe this powder when it goes on, it's very fluffy, fluffy, fluffy powder. And so then I heated it and it was kind of hard to see it because it does have a lower loft. And I had to really check to make sure I had got it all melted. And I, I'm not sure how long you're supposed to heat it for. I just melted it until it looked like it was not, not granular anymore and shiny. And then I cut a piece of foil, just a little bit larger than the image, and then sandwiched it in between some typing paper. And I'm gonna use that as my carrier sheet and send this through my mink. Now I did speed up the camera because I think you'd wanna stick a fork in your eye if you watch this in real time. <laughs> and I preheated the machine to a level three and sent it through. When it was cool, 
I went ahead and peeled off the foil and I got a nicely foiled image, but it was a little bit chunkier and more smashed, I guess, than I was hoping for. So I thought, you know what, let's try reducing the heat level to one on the mink and do it again and see what we get. And I thought this preserved more of the details and a lot less smooshing, smashing of the image. And I think I want to experiment a little bit more with that, but I think in the future, I'm going to keep the temperature a little lower on my mink to see if I can get more details. You're not going to get a, a super flat foiled finish, but pretty fair um, for the for this particular technique. Next up, I wanted to try the Melt It embossing powder and make my own 3D embellishment. So I took one of their tin containers and pinched it to create a pouring spout. And then I'm going to take that Melt It powder and spoon some of that into the container. And I only put a little bit here at first. You do want to hold it with pliers because this pan is going to get very hot and you're going to use your heat gun and go directly underneath the pan and heat from the bottom, the underside. And here you can see it's starting to melt. But because you have so much powder there in the tin, it does take some time. And when I got to this point, I was like, what? That's not enough powder to do anything with. So, and you'll notice I'm working on my clipboard and a nonstick sheet. And the reason for that is I didn't want to damage my cutting pad underneath with excessive heat. So you do need to protect your work surface. So I took way more of this melted powder and put it in there. I think I've got like a quarter cup in there now. And then I started reheating it. Now, my big mistake with this was that it was going to take quite a long time to reheat this powder and get it all molten. So <laughs> I cut out parts of this because I was like, okay, nobody wants to watch this. It's like watching paint dry. So in hindsight, I really wish that I had um, one of those old electric skillets. You can, I'm certain you can probably find one at the Goodwill store and just crank it up. You're not worried. You're not going to be cooking in it. And then just set that little pan down in the electric skillet and heat it up, just crank up the temperature, let it sit in there until the powder's all nicely melted. And then you can, you know, go ahead and start pouring it out. So I set aside my heat gun after I finally got it all melted. Here you can see what, you know, what that amount actually melted into. And I just made some little, like I was trying to make my own epoxy dots, clear epoxy dots there on the Teflon nonstick sheet. And then I grabbed the button mold because I thought, well, what the heck, this silicone mold is available and I've got quite a bit of powder melted here, so I might as well try to use it and see what I get. So the one thing I totally forgot though was that I probably overfilled the mold and so I ended up with domed buttons on the back. So I decided, well, let's wait and see what happens when I pop them out. And in the meantime, I want to make some like sea glass looking epoxy dots and buttons. So I added some beautiful embossing powder. And because it's transparent, I knew it was not going to completely colorize that clear melted powder. So I reheated everything again. Here you can see kind of a marbled effect. You do want to be careful when you're doing this. Now I was on camera and I had to remind myself, don't tilt that and spill it on yourself because it's going to be very hot. <laughs> And then um, set aside my heat gun and start pouring the droplets there onto the nonstick sheet and then added some more to my silicone mold. I'm like, what the heck? Might as well make as many buttons as you can out of what you got and see what happens. And then when it was all cool, I could pop those droplets right off the nonstick craft sheet quite nicely. And these are fun. Here you can see the color showing through. And I really want to experiment more uh, with that because I think these are really fun and I would use these quite a bit on my project because I love epoxy dots. And um, whatever turned out to be too misshapen, the rejects, I called them. <laughs> Sorry, guys, you're rejects. I'm going to toss them back into the pan and remelt them. You can do that and remake them. And I went ahead and popped all my buttons out to see how they turned out. And I was right. I did overfill the molds. And so the holes are, you know, there's not actually real holes <laughs> to put thread through. So I took all the reject buttons, which happened to be all of them on the first go around, and tossed them back into the pan, and I remelted everything again to try making more of these buttons and not overfilling. And it does take a little bit of practice and a steadier hand, I found, um, 
I have trouble with tendonitis in my right arm, so I have a hard time holding things steady with that hand. Anyway, I also wanted to make more droplets since I had that stuff all melted there, and I reheated from the top. You can do that if the powder's already melted because you're not gonna blow anything around at that point. So even when it gets really hard again, I can save that tin and come back and remelt it and keep using it until I use it all up. So I just poured, I set aside my heat tool, and I just kept pouring more of those. And then when they were cool, the ones that were kind of had these strings of the melt, um, the melted powder kind of hanging off them, once they were cool, I just took my tweezers and grabbed onto it and then slumped it. And that's using a little bit of the heat tool, the heat from the heat tool to kind of just touch up those spots and it kind of slumps it back into the shape it belongs. So anyway, you can experiment with that, but I thought these turned out really fun. My second go around with the buttons, um, was much more productive and so I know when I try it again I'll I'll know to keep in mind not to overfill those button molds but those are super fun and I can't wait to make more of those and use those on my cards and then the last thing I wanted to try was the ultra high gold rich powder to do some uh, deep thermal embossing and what that means is or deep impression embossing and what that means is i need to get a thick layer of embossing powder going here and as you can see the ultra high does create a very thick layer and then i needed to prep my stamp and so i'm using the wow embossing pad first i swiped it across the paper and then added the powder melted it and then i'm going to do a second layer and my stamp has been prepped with the while wow, ultra slow drying ink because I need a release agent that will allow me to stick my stamp into that molten embossing powder and then when it's cool the stamp will pop out easily. So I'm just making sure that is all nicely melted and then I'm going to put my stamp into it. Now one thing I did which in hindsight I wish I hadn't but I pressed pretty firmly and this really squidged it all out and I added up ended up with some bubbles that I didn't like. So I decided to remelt it and try again. Um, so I just went ahead and reheated it so it was all nice and molten and then this time I just set the stamp down into it and I didn't firmly smash it into the embossing powder and this time I got much more um, of a nice finish and the details are all preserved there but this is a really cool way to make like faux sealing wax. Uh, embellishments on your cards. Awesome. So I had a lot of fun playing with these products. You can find WOW embossing powders and products at ellenhudson.com and we also have more still shots and further details available at our newsletter blog. Thanks for watching. Yeah.